uh, work session for today, May 18th, 2021. Uh, we're going to get an update on the Willamette Water Supply Project and the Toilet and Sherwood Road Roy Rogers Widening Project. Um, and I will just actually introduce uh, David Kraska with the Willamette Water Supply Project and Stephen Roberts with Washington County Land Use and Transportation, and they will um, take it from here and introduce their team and give you guys your update. Great. Thank you, Julia. Uh, good evening, commissioners or counselors and Mayor Mays. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and present to you guys tonight. Um, We've got a lot of information to share with you and hopefully uh, generate a lot of uh, questions and, and, um, and uh, just to give you information you need at this time as we're uh, starting to head into a significant uh, construction activity uh, going forward. Uh, starting off here, um, David Kraska, I'm the Willamette Water Supply Program Director. Um, along with me tonight is Mike Britch. He is our Engineering and Construction Manager. So. Um, any technical questions or things of that nature, I'm going to be reaching over to Mike, but I'll be doing the presentation for the Willamette Water Supply Program. Um, and I'll leave it to uh, Stephen Roberts to introduce the, uh, the, the folks from the county. Great. Thanks, Dave. Thank you all for having us tonight. I'm Stephen Roberts. I'm the Land Use and Transportation Director for Washington County. And I've got a few folks with me here tonight. Uh, Russ Knobel is a uh, principal engineer in our capital projects group. Russ is actually going to do the bulk of the presentation. Uh, Matt Meyer is, a, is the project manager for all of our Twelfth and Sherwood and Roy Rogers Road improvement projects. And Joe Yonkins is with us. Joe's our capital projects division manager too. And um, so glad to be here tonight and look forward to uh, getting you up to date on what we're up to. Okay, thanks, Stephen. So I think I'll take it over from here. I am going to trust the technology gods and try to share my screen with you. And if I just have one person or anybody confirm that you can actually see my screen now. Yeah, I can see it. All right, off we go. So I'm going to run the presentation from my screen. So um, as we go through it, um, I, Stephen and I kind of coordinated on this a little bit. Uh, we're more than uh, happy to answer questions as we go along. So don't feel like you have to save it to the very end. If I go over anything too quickly, or if you got any questions as we're going along, um, fire away. Uh, but starting off with the outline, I'm going to be providing kind of a refresher about the Willamette Water Supply Program for anyone who's either forgotten or has never heard the story, just kind of where, how we came to be. And then also talk about our coordination with Washington County, between Washington County and Willamette Water Supply Program, just a, a, a quick highlight of what we do together and what we are doing together. I will then present about our projects, the uh, Willamette Water Supply Program projects around your city. And then I'll pass it off to Russ to uh, cover the Washington County projects near Sherwood. So program background. Uh, this all started, well, it started actually much longer ago, but really this uh, effort started back around 2011 when uh, TVWD and Hillsborough were, were evaluating their long-term water supply options. Um, and they landed on the Willamette River um, after a multi-year technical study. Started around 2011 and ended around 2013. The, value, the options that they looked at at that time was uh, kind of starting north there, a new groundwater supply, um, kind of up, up around Savi Island. They looked at increasing storage at Hag Lake through the JWC system. Uh, they looked at uh, additional purchases from Portland and also the mid Willamette River supply down at the Willamette River Water Treatment Plant. And these are independent studies that were done by Hillsborough and TVWD and both uh, entities selected the mid Willamette River for lower cost of the options being, being evaluated. Uh, excellent water quality as proven um, over almost two decades of use now by both uh, uh, Wilsonville and Sherwood. Uh, ownership, that this affords ownership of the water supply. It's a reliable supply and of the options considered uh, fewer environmental impacts to implement. So with the supply option selected, then they went about creating a mission for it. And it reads well, I'll just read it out loud. It's a provide cost-effective, reliable, and resilient water supply system by July 2026 that benefits current and future generations of the communities we serve and supports a vibrant local economy. And you'll also notice at the bottom of this graphic, the city of Beaverton was added. Uh, city of Beaverton became an official partner in this effort in 2019. 
Uh, one of the key elements of this mission is the date. It's always great to have a date certainty in your mission. July 2026 has always been the date when we're uh, scheduled to be finished, and that hasn't changed, and it needs to be done by then. Hey, David, a quick question on that. Yep. Is, uh, is Beaverton as a partner, that's just for the supply side. The, the, uh, the supply program is not going to be selling to individual ratepayers in Beaverton, are they? Oh, no, not at all, no. Uh, no, the uh, the Willamette Water Supply System is a uh, it, it, it supplies water to its to its owners to distribute. So we're going to supply water to TVWD through specific connections. We're going to supply water to Beaverton through I think two separate connections, and then to City of Hillsboro to through up about six connections, and then then that's it. Then the then the individual entities distribute and and sell water to uh, to retail customers. Okay, thanks. Glad, for, thanks for the question. So what is the system? Starting down at the Willamette River, we have the river intake that's located in Wilsonville. And there's an existing intake that's right now serving the Willamette River water treatment plant. What we're doing at that intake is obviously expanding it. We're going to be expanding it to meet the future needs of the whole area. But also really important there is we're, we're vastly improving the seismic resiliency of the intake. Uh, given that is the, it is the single place where all of us can draw water from the Willamette River, we need to make sure it's going to withstand the earthquake. And so we've just, um, just within the last couple of weeks, completed all the groundwork improvement work that we needed to do to make sure that, uh, that, it's, that the, it's going to stay in place. Uh, very soon, we're going to be replacing the screens. We're going to be hardening the intake pipeline and the uh, pump building on top. So that's all seismic improvements that we're doing in that facility to make sure it withstands the, uh, the future earthquake. What, Another key what, level, what, what, what level of earthquake is it built to sustain, uh, to, to um, survive? Thanks for the question. So I am going to answer. So the design earthquake is the Cascadia subduction zone event. Right. So does that answer the question? Well, sure, but uh, sort of. I mean, that that would be my hope and assumption. But that could be, you know, anywhere, you know, from a sub nine to a nine point five, or God forbid, even higher. So I, I'm just curious if it's a particular rating level that it's rated for. Well, I think I've got the guy on the call to exact answer that question exactly. So, Mike, do you have more specific uh, information to share? Uh, yeah, I do. So, actually. Um... Yes, it's, uh, as Dave mentioned, it's designed for the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake, uh, magnitude 9.0 earthquake. Uh, but the way that we approached the seismic hazard was that uh, we did what's called a probabilistic seismic hazard analysis, where we're not just looking at just the Cascadia uh, event as, as the sole uh, seismic event, but we're looking at all the potential seismic events in our, in our area, and, and that includes the West Hills Fault. And so by this approach, um, we're able to consider all the different types of hazards, and it's also based on the level of uh, seismic event that would occur once every 2,500 years or so. Thank you. Yep. Thanks again for the question. So that's the river intake. That's how we get water into the system. Uh, we'll also include our raw water pump station down in that area. And then another key component is our uh, state-of-the-art water treatment plant. That is going to be a key feature located at the western edge of the city along Southwest 124th Avenue. Uh, the program also includes more than 30 miles of large diameter transmission main, uh, large diameter meeting 66 inch. I think the smallest pipes that we're installing are 48 inch, though we're also doing some 30 inch pipe. And then water storage tanks. We have two water storage tanks planned on top of Cooper Mountain, both of them 15 million gallons in capacity. So um, over the last uh, five years, Washington County and the program have been cooperating and planning their work together so that it provides uh, numerous benefits. So coordinating our projects provides multiple public benefits. First of all, it saves money on design and construction. 
um, field investigation, design redundancies. By doing these projects together, we're able to not have our, uh, our work be redundant or overlap. We'll be able to coordinate and share on that work. And along with that, sharing mobilization, traffic control, public outreach, erosion control, things that we need to do during construction. Um, it will save money for, um, for the public's benefit. Um, it will reduce impacts on commuters, businesses, and the environment. Uh, by coordinating these projects, instead of doing them independently, um, it will reduce all of those impacts. Um, it does enable additional transportation improvements. Uh, through a cooperative agreement that uh, the program is doing with Washington County, we're able to fund additional uh, road improvements that the county can implement. And it also builds on a history of successful completion of past projects. It's frankly not easy to uh, coordinate and, uh, and do these projects together. It, uh, it requires a lot of trust, a lot of cooperation, a lot of alignment of schedules and other activities, but we uh, are, are fully on board and our leadership is fully on board with all the public benefits that are realized from doing this. So now I'm gonna to pivot to talk about, uh, provide you an update, some, just some general information about the projects, the Willamette Water Supply Pro uh, Program projects that are gonna be happening in and around your city. There are two main types um, of projects around Sherwood, pipeline projects and three separate, three separate projects that are, we're doing with Washington County, and then our water treatment plant. The first of these pipeline projects is being bid right now. We're expecting to open bids in, uh, in just a couple of weeks in early June. That's our Southwest Twilight and Sherwood Road uh, project from Southwest Olds Place to Southwest Borchers Drive, uh, also known as our 99 Crossing Project. 4,200 uh, linear feet of 66 inch welded steel pipe. Our planned construction notice to proceed um, is August. So late summer of this year, we're expecting construction to begin and the entire project to finish up in September of 2024. The combined road and pipeline project value on this one is estimated at $27 million. Our PLM 4.2 project, that's our pipeline project for in uh, Southwest Wild and Sherwood Road from 124th Avenue to Olds Place. And this one's 7,250 uh, linear feet of 66 inch welded steel pipe. Uh, construction plan, construction notice to proceed is in March of next year and finish uh, that project in June of 2025. And the combined value on that one is 55 million. And then finally, PLM 4.4, that's our project along Roy Rogers Road from Borchers uh, to Chicken Creek. That's a, that's a little over 3,000 feet of the six, six inch pipe. We're expecting to begin, in, begin construction on that one in January and wrap up in December of 2023. Uh, combined value on that one is about 18 million. So this is um, just some real high level information on the projects uh, from the pipeline uh, part. Um, what's, uh, when, in Russ's presentation, he's gonna go over a lot more of the details as far as what the finished roadway uh, cross sections are looking like and, and uh, talk about those details. So um, on the end of that segment, um, the next segment is going, is not gonna continue on the road or it just isn't, because the, the road project is gonna go to the bridge. So the road, yeah, the road project goes to the bridge. I don't believe the current the current planned road project includes uh, the bridge crossing Chicken Creek, right. Russ or Steve. But the, and the, but the pipe doesn't go to the bridge. The pipe, the, on this particular project, PLM 4.4, it stops just short of the bridge. You can see it kind of ticks off to the west there. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's, that's where we can get a, um, I, I believe, again, Mike can correct me here, but I believe that's where, that's where we're going to be launching or sending our trenchless construction underneath Chicken Creek to get to the other side. And it's actually going to cross diagonally from the west side to the east side across Chicken Creek to the other side of Roy Rogers Road. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Hey, Dave, can I ask a quick question before you move on to Russ? Sure. The different project values, the second component was significantly more expensive, 55 million compared to the other portions. Is it just because of the length of the project? What's driving the, the big cost for that portion? 
Yeah, that's that's the biggest part of it, I believe. So you can see this one's 27 million for 4,200 feet. And yep. so 7,200 feet, 55 million. And, and so in terms of exactly, it, so certainly the, the distance or length of the project has a lot to do with that. But Mike, any other highlights of why this one is significantly more expensive? Yeah, the little subtle distinction there on the colors you see on the map. So the 7,200 feet you see there uh, represents the combined road and pipeline work, which takes you to 124th. And that's where our pipe turns and we connect to an existing pipe. But the road keeps going on that purple section, probably an equal length. And so that probably contributes to the higher total value. Okay. Got Thank it. you. Thanks. Good questions. So now I'm going to pivot from the pipeline projects to the treatment plant project. Um, this aerial photo is quite dated now because of all the activity that Trammell Crow has implemented. Uh, there at the at the corner of Twild and Sherwood Road and 124th Avenue, but this just shows the uh, the, the total um, ore uh, family uh, par property that was purchased uh, by uh, by the program, and uh, the red dotted line there shows where we uh, um, uh, divided the two properties into treatment plant site and the the industrial park, the light industrial park that's under construction right now. So focusing on the treatment plant development area, it looks kind of like this. And so this just shows the, uh, the constrained area where we are going to be building the treatment plant. Um, it shows the Southwest Ore Road that's proposed um, basically at the north edge of our property and separating our property from the light industrial development. Um, shows the treatment plant layout there uh, going from Ore Road out to 124th Avenue. And most of the area uh, south of our treatment plant is either protected wetland or other isolated lands that we're protecting or the uh, PGE easement. So we we're able to squeeze our treatment plant on about 20 acres of, the, of about 46 acres of property that we had. So the project also includes uh, some significant roadway improvements that we're doing along with our water treatment plant. Southwest Ore Drive connecting uh, 124th Avenue eventually, uh, I believe it's gonna connect eventually to Oregon Street. Uh, that's gonna be constructed as part of our project, as well as half street improvements along Southwest 124th. So along, along our entire frontage there, similar to what Trammell Crow is doing, we're adding another travel lane and developing the, uh, the sidewalk improvements and bike lane improvements and things of that nature. Um, hey, David. Yes. Quick question. Um, are you going to be able to, so I don't know if you've been following what's going on in Salem, but they just passed that uh, prevailing wage law where they're changing the uh, calculation for roads and construction projects. And uh, they're going to a model where they're going to look at collective bargaining agreements in the region and then actually take the highest wage instead of the average. Um, and so they're expecting a lot of cost increases on projects uh, due to that. Are you guys looking at that or, or do you have the ability to lock in some of these contracts before that takes effect? Because it, it seems like it's going to affect your project in a big way. Yeah, uh, Councillor Rosner, you're catching me a little bit flat footed there. I, I know that's something that we constantly have to track. It, not uh, not uh, one of the one of our other constraints is. Uh, both TVWD and Hillsborough and Beaverton, to a certain extent, have significant WIFIA funding. And so that, that does require us to follow uh, basically all of those regulations in terms of, in terms of wages and whatever's coming down the, down the way. Um, in terms of being able to lock in or avoid any of that, I'm frankly pretty doubtful. So um, we're, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the hazards of doing something as massive as we're doing is, is small regulatory changes like this. Even a small change on, um, there was a recent change in the tax calculations. Um, I can't remember exactly what, corporate activity tax. Uh, that that's, that's another one that, that seemed like a minor thing on the, uh, on the ballot, but actually ends up costing us a significant amount of money. And, yeah. and so one of the things, uh, it's, it's one of the risks that we track on the program. And uh, one of our tools that we use is what's called management reserve for, for um, basically tracking risks and being able to afford them as the program goes along. And this would basically fall under that, under that category there. Yeah, um, 
I think uh, U- uh, University of Oregon and uh, Chicago, I can't remember the other firm, but they did a study on it and they were expecting it to add about 10% to uh, public construction projects. Um, so just FYI, something you might want to check out. Thank you for the good news, Councilor uh, Rosner. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, David. So I don't know if you're going to get to this. Um, are you going to talk about the timeline to build this plant? Because um, I think we'll be probably talking about that in our budget meeting in two nights um, and how the, the value of this facility um, that you're going to be building. I don't know if that's in your presentation. So uh, certainly one of the last slides I have is on schedule. So it's just a, a real high level look at schedule. So that may or may not meet your needs. And in terms of the value uh, of the project, uh, that's a that's a pretty squishy number because we've got a lot of different opinions on what the what the value of this construction project is. Um, I'm comfortable saying here tonight that it's in the range of 250 to 300 million dollars. And just a sense of scale for council members and the public, the new high school, which was built, um, I believe was about 185 million, just in terms of the value. So. Very good. Um, any other questions about this? No, thank you. Okay, continuing on. Um, another element of our project is natural resource protection. Um, along with this property, we purchased a big Colk wetland or Colk pond. And uh, it's, a, it's an important natural resource that we are protecting as part of our work. Um, as well as the Southern natural resource area. So basically there's some isolated, isolated lands that have a lot of tree cover and we're going to be, uh, going to be protecting that. Um, in the end, we'll have 43% uh, tree canopy on our development, uh, which exceeds the uh, city standards. Um, we are impacting some wetlands. Uh, it's just a, a, a requirement uh, in, in order for us to get our work done. Uh, but we have mitigation plans for all of that. Offsite mitigation bank credits purchased and approved by the U.S. Army Corps and a division of state lands. And then also on some onsite mitigation at approximately one and a half to one ratio, um, all approved by Clean Water Services. Uh, we also are providing as part of our treatment plan projects some natural resources and public access. So this Colk Pond that we're, uh, that we're protecting, we're going to be providing what's called a forest platform with some interpretive displays. And that'll provide some access for educational programs. So school tours and things of that nature for folks to get out there and actually see what this looks like and be able to participate in it to a certain degree. And you can see it on the right side of this graphic here that it says the elevated forest uh, platform. And so the, uh, the public parking that's just off of this graphic here on the left side, uh, folks will be able to walk along the, uh, the sidewalk there over to this viewer, viewing platform in front of our administration building. And we intend everything to, uh, to have an appealing look to it, lots of like natural uh, plantings and things of that nature to make things look pleasant. Uh, similarly, along Orr Road, so this is a view of Southwest Orr Road facing south, so this is facing toward our treatment plant, and so this is what we anticipate looking like, obviously, after the plants uh, are there for a few years, but you can see there's a lot of natural area, and our fence line for our treatment plant is set back uh, quite a ways from the road, so it's good, good frontage uh, land before you see the uh, treatment plant features. And then this is a view of the intersection, the future intersection, um, Southwest or it's coming in uh, essentially from the right there. And this is uh, essentially on uh, 124th Avenue. Um, what's, uh, what's featured there is uh, some, of our, some of our fencing features. Um, our finished water pump station building is that rust uh, sort of look colored uh, building there in the background. In terms of schedule and important dates, um, this project uh, started with uh, Washington County approved the partitioning of our of our of this uh, property back in August 26th in 2019, and so that enabled us to create this separate parcel uh, for Trammell Crow to do their work. Uh, we annexed to the city in uh, December 27 of 2019, and we received city land use approval in December 31st of 2020. 
we're anticipating starting construction spring of next year. So this time next year, we will be uh, be moving uh, moving soil out there and getting to work nonstop uh, to finish construction in 2025 and be operational in 2026. Now the, the, the big distance there between construction finishing and plant being operational, uh, firing up, testing and proving out a brand new water treatment plant takes some time and we wanna make sure we get it right. And so we're gonna be pushing hard, pretty hard on the construction finishing well in advance to make sure that we have plenty of time to do the commissioning and startup and not only of the whole treatment plant, but of the entire Willamette water supply system, uh, since it will be a vast new uh, water supply uh, for the cities of Hillsborough and Beaverton and for TVWD. And I believe that's my last slide. Um, is there more, any more questions or any more information I can provide before I pass it off to Russ? All right. Hey, just a reminder, we are, Working on a connection to this plant, correct? A tie-in? Yeah, there are two things uh, that we're working on. One is an emergency water supply connection. And, and so that will be a connection between our finished water system. So after the water goes all the way through the water treatment plant, gets to our clear well. So we'll have a connection there from our finished water pumps to the city's distribution system that should the city need an emergency water supply, we'll have the infrastructure there to make it, make it available to the city. Uh, we'd like to make it a two-way connection so that from a regional basis, it makes sense to be able to share water back and forth. And so that's how we're laying out this, uh, the, uh, the emergency connection so that it has that sort of flexibility. Uh, obviously after, so we'll take care of making that part of our water treatment plant improvement project. And we'll need to work with the city in creating an intergovernmental agreement on how we operate uh, that equipment and how we just all of the, all of the, um, uh, protocols necessary to make sure that we're all on the same page when we, uh, when we actually operate the emergency intertie. Thank you. The other thing, uh, the other thing that I've been um, uh, in communication with, uh, with uh, the city attorney, Josh Soper, on is, a, is an intergovernmental agreement regarding uh, WWSS supplying uh, future build out areas in Sherwood. And so we are, um, uh, we're working through kind of the framework of, of that as far as what that looks like, what needs to be include, included on that. And I don't have a lot of details to provide you on that um, other than to just uh, assert to you that we're working on it and we're going to get it pulled together. Um, but a future topic of conversation I'm sure we'll be having. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Okay. I think with that, I'll pass it off to Russ. And Russ, just let me know when you want me to advance the slides. Thanks, Dave. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, um, Mayor Mays, uh, Council, for letting us come back and talk here. Um, I know we probably, we were, last time we talked to your council was about a year ago on one specific project out here. We're going to talk tonight about the, the three major projects out in this area, um, if you can advance, Dave. <clears throat> This is basically the area we're talking about. You guys are very familiar, of course, uh, Twal and Sherwood Road, basically from uh, Chicken Creek on over to 124th. And then the, the project continues on over to Teton also. Um, go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> Dave mentioned uh, in his presentation this uh, Roy Rogers Road, Twal and Sherwood Road, basically we sort of nickname it the 99W Crossing, uh, basically from Borchers to Olds. That project, uh, as Dave mentioned, is, is out for bid right now, <clears throat> scheduled to open on June 2nd. And the dates are pretty much uh, the same as what Dave had in here. Uh, we start uh, August of this year, and we should have that uh, completed by uh, fall of uh, 2024. Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> Just for uh, a little overlook here, what that cross section in general look like, it'll be the five lane cross section. Of course, as you get to 99W, there'll be the additional left turn lane. Um, <clears throat> there are um, on-street bike lanes through this area and then the um, sidewalk and uh, planter strips. So we'll go on to the uh, next slide, Dave. <clears throat> talk about the, uh, <clears throat> this is the larger project. Uh, this one also costs us a whole lot more like it, it did the water district there. It's basically 
we were building all the way from Olds over to Teton. And uh, that project, uh, we're starting up um, final design and right away. And we're scheduled to bid that spring of next year. And we would be done with construction sometime summer to fall of 2025. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> The cross section through this area uh, is the five lanes again, center turn lane. Uh, through this area, we had some changes in our standards. And uh, so we're gonna pull the, pull the bike lanes up and have the multi-use pathways. I think you see those in Sherwood on, on Langer Farms Parkway also. So the same kind of general, <clears throat> general cross section through there. Russ, Russ thanks. Are you gonna, the, the good and the bad, we certainly like our mm. off street by multi-use bike paths, but our bicyclists don't necessarily use it that way. They stay on the road. So granted different speeds, different circumstances, but here, am I correct that the county will sign the heck out of it? A lot of good signage to get them to realize where they need to, where bicyclists should be to be safe. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, the city struggles with the same kind of thing we do. Um, <clears throat> it, it, we are going to see probably bikes on the street. Uh, those are going to be your aggressive bikers, I think. But um, we, we will have a lot of signage show kind of the delineation through there between bikes and peds and, and try to help people encourage them <clears throat> to get up on these multi-use pathways and, and out of traffic. You know, I, I think over time that the speeds out there and, and, you know, the outside lane is still only 12 foot wide. So it, it's going to be fairly, you know, it's not going to be a pleasant area to ride unless you are definitely that professional bike rider. But again, just, just to say, yes, you're going to have good signage. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, we will have good signage. Our, our, our uh, public safety professionals will be glad to cite the heck out of the people that are riding on the roadway when they don't belong. <laughs> yeah. And is that, is that the style of lighting you're putting out there? Yeah, through this section, it's uh, mostly industrial. <clears throat> um, this is, Tim, this is our standard. I think we talked about this about a year ago. This would be our standard lighting, the, the cobra head type lighting. <clears throat> and I know we'll get into the next project here a little bit more detail, <clears throat> but um it, it um, will have a different type of lighting on the, on the, the other project. Okay. In the 99 crossing, you have a slightly different. Yeah. And in the 99 W crossing, it was hard to tell. Dave, can you go back a couple slides? <clears throat> yeah. If, if you look at those, they're really hard to see because they're, they're hidden by the tree, but those particular light poles are going to be a uh, powder coated black. And those will match up with the next section as you head towards Chicken Creek and, and the same type of powder coated black, but there'll be a different light. <clears throat> okay, go ahead, Dave, back to like that second cross section there. <clears throat> Any other questions on that? I know you guys are all waiting for the next one, huh? So d d go ahead and forward, Dave. <clears throat> so, um, I think it was, yeah, I wrote down uh, April of last year when we talked to you about this particular project. So we're a lot further along than we were at that point in time. I think we're very early in the design. We're, <clears throat> we're into final design now and approaching, you know, 100% design sometime later this summer. <clears throat> and, and with that, we'd have, you know, be able to bid this uh, late fall, early winter, November this year and then uh, be complete uh, the fall of 2023. <clears throat> now, we did, like I said, come and talk with you guys about this particular project, and we got a lot of great input uh, from the council. And, and so we've taken that input, and I wanna show you what we've done with that. Um, and roughly, we've added about uh, $750,000 worth of extra stuff to try to address some of the council's questions. And so, Dave, if you wanna, forward to the next slide. <clears throat> so the, the typical cross section out here is going to look like this. You're going to, there are going to be areas that you have a planted median. That planted median is not going to be continuous, <clears throat> but there will be areas like this. On the left-hand side, and, and I apologize that it's so small, but that, that's a cross section to kind of show where a noise wall would be 
you're going to have kind of these uh, bush type uh, features along that noise wall <clears throat> in, in sort of, a, you know, <clears throat> 30 inch area like the mayor had talked about previous. And then you're going to have the, the more the Westbrook style light uh, with the black uh, powder coat. On the opposite side, what that's showing is in areas where we have additional right of way, um, there's not homes really tight up to the road and there's, a, you know, and there's no noise walls in those areas. So you have the ability to put trees out there and some more landscaping. How, how tall are the noise walls? <clears throat> um, Tim, those vary. Uh, maybe if Matt's on this, Matt, you want to chime in, do you know, heights out there yeah they they vary from 10 to 12 feet generally well that's some mighty tall people on the sidewalk there just saying <laughs> yeah. yeah it's really not to scale sorry about that <laughs> yeah me and matt were texting back we're gonna have to hire dave's graphic artists they seem to do a little bit better on their pictures uh so any other questions on this Go to the next slide there, Dave, if you don't mind. <clears throat> so as I talked about, this is kind of, I think you sort of saw this about a year ago, up to the left-hand side of the screen is where Chicken Creek Bridge is. And so we start to come into that curve <clears throat> and you see that first median, that median will be planted. It, it's a little bit hard along here, but it is green along the sound walls. And I'll kind of show you more detail of what that will look like, the types of plants that will be against that sound wall. <clears throat> and a lot of those plants came from input from you guys. Um, and then uh, as you come to the corner there at the bottom of the screen, we have additional right of way out there in front of the church. So there'll be some additional plantings out in that area, <clears throat> uh, additional median, <clears throat> excuse me, planted and then plantings along the noise wall. Again, uh, the middle of the screen, it gets real narrow um, through this area. We're right in front of the cemetery. So we really had to narrow down to avoid getting into the cemetery. So we we're really limited in what we could put out in that area. And then as you start to go beyond that, then you get back to more of that standard cross-section look with the medium planted and plantings along the landscaping, or excuse me, along the noise wall. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> so this is kind of a picture to kind of show you what you'd see in the median landscape. And um, there would be something like these red sunset maples, uh, these uh, knockout, petite knockout roses. Uh, I think you guys see those up on Langer Farms, uh, the north, uh, or sorry, the south side of that. And um, <clears throat> so, this kind of gives you kind of a picture of what might be out or what will be out there that's going into the landscaping plans. Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> you see those red trees again, uh, mainly just uh, this is this is denoted the right of way landscaping. So up in the one area, but it's just, just kind of showing you we'll have the trees again in that area. Um, same type of rose, more of a pink rose. Um, and, and they're still trying to, you know, they're going to, put these in periodically throughout to, um, you know, and, and so they could mix with the red roses also. Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> so along the sound wall, you know, we clearly heard uh, from Mayor Mays and many of you, you didn't want uh, ivy. So these are the type of plants you could see in front of the noise wall. You'll see more of a box, you know, a column, column type trees or boxwood, the, the Burberries and um, you know junipers, I think you have out there right now, and uh, I and then more of an Italian cypress. Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> so the noise wall, um, you know, we we heard from you guys that those you know just plain standard concrete noise walls are are not great to look at. So we took. We took a look at a uh, multiple different types of noise walls, worked with your staff and came up with uh, this type of ashlar stone pattern. Um, so this, this is the type of pattern that will be out in the front <clears throat> and it will be colored concrete that goes in there. And, and Matt, maybe can you talk about the color? I think it's gonna be lighter than this that's shown here. Is that correct? 
Yeah, we, we haven't actually nailed down um, the exact color, but we're, we're thinking an earth tone uh, makes sense. And, you know, obviously we're open to uh, suggestions on that um, from Sherwood. Thanks, Russell, Matt. And it's safe to say that there's some finish treatment on it to help repel bad youth behavior. Yeah, yeah. Typically, we'll do a anti graffiti um, coating, which essentially just allows. Yeah, it makes it easier to clean. Um, and we typically do that on any 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 wall like this. It's going to be in the right of way uh, for that reason. Perfect. Go ahead, Dave, one more. And this is kind of the look of that noise wall pattern, probably closer to the neutral earthy tones that Matt was talking about <clears throat> and kind of showing you the difference of the, the landscaping that goes along through there and then looking further up the street there, the, the trees out in the median. And I think this is going to be it for my slides. So maybe um, any questions on that last slide or any questions on the previous? Don't be shy, folks. <clears throat> hey, Mayor, I have a question. Yeah. I have two, actually. So I was wondering, uh, number one, what is there going to be some kind of a texture, maybe not a color, but a texture or some sort of treatment to the residential side of those sound walls? Number one. Number two, um, I'm sure the county has come up with some sort of a plan to help, and I hate to use these two words together, mitigate congestion along Tualatin and Sherwood Road during the, I'm looking at the uh, <clears throat> Willamette Water Supply Program Schedule Gantt chart, and it looks like all four construction bars on Tualatin and Sherwood Road are concurring throughout all of 2022 and like 80% of 2023. That's all of that road at some point of being torn up and put back down. So the county has a reasonably <coughs> sharp plan to help mitigate congestion, frustration, right? I guess yes. that's my question. So um, first do we question, know about it. First yeah. question, uh, the backside of those walls uh, will be that more standard type noise wall wall coating with the the fractured fin look on the back side of those walls <clears throat> um the next question is so currently you have uh you know four to yeah, well i should say two to three to four lanes out there those lanes will always remain open on twalton sherwood road the plan is to widen to one side <clears throat> put traffic on that side we'll uh, on the other side, where we're going to widen again, we'll put in the, the pipeline over there before we widen on that side. So the pipeline work will be out of traffic through most of this. There'll be some impact to traffic as we're crossing intersections and different things. But the majority of the time, uh, the existing lanes will all be open to traffic. They'll just shift one way. And then once the pipe's in, then we'll, sh you know, uh, pave that side and, and, and then you'll have all the improvements in place. Great, thank you so much. Sure. <clears throat> More questions? Um, Russell, if in here, just the more vertical plantings, you know, the better. Um, just, get, just to add more green or red or whatever the plant material color is, um, the better. Yeah, and I'll just jump in and I'll say I was the one who complained that it was the previous plans were looking a little too Las Vegas for my looks, uh, for my taste, since I lived in Vegas for a number of years. This is an improvement. I, I will definitely give you that. This this different stone, this different, even the different color, that that gray for, you know, as far as the eye can see is just such a depressing look. Um, so this is better. I appreciate that you have, have listened to some input and, and made some changes here. So thanks for that. Yeah, in the county, you, you stood up and I mean, you, you put significant more dollars into the project than uh, originally planned and um, greatly appreciated. And, and yeah. I appreciate the focus on some bike lanes here too. Um, you know, I, 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 I am 
an advocate for biking where and making it safe at the same time. So this is great. So thanks for that. And I was just going to say, Mayor, I think uh, this slide sort of gets at your question from earlier about marking the bike facility. So you can see we'll have the, you know, the assumption is we'll have those stencils there. And again, trying to help guide people to ride where we hope they ride. Um, and I, I, I was kind of scratching my head. I, I didn't look it up, but uh, I, I don't know that we can actually compel cyclists to use that facility if they choose to ride in the road. I, I don't know that that would be a so, I, so I've been told, and I could be certainly wrong, <laughs> but I've been told that the laws for bicyclists is if there is a designated bike lane, they're required to use it. If there's not a designated bike lane and there's a sidewalk, they have to use the sidewalk. Um, and then it's the shoulder. And then if there's none of that, then they can be out in the roadway. Yeah, I'm out of my depth here. So I, yeah. I'll... And, and I could... I'm, I'm not a law enforcement professional, so a, what I would, could, be, could have been told or, or how I remember it <clears throat> could be wrong. Yeah, I'm looking to see if Chief Growth's on the, on the call. I don't see him currently, so. It's not a question we need to answer tonight. <clears throat> no, but it's a good question to ask just in general. I do have a, a question around the bike lane facility. So I noticed in the cross section from the creek to Borchers, and the cross section from Olds to Tualatin. Yeah. The bike facility is up, up more close to the sidewalk, but in the cross section between Borchers and Olds, it's in the roadway. Is there a reason? Or I'm sure there's a reason. So please explain to us the reason <laughs> why it's not up alongside the sidewalk in that <clears throat> section, that middle section. So they're like, if I'm thinking as a biker, I'm up on the sidewalk area. And then all of a sudden I cross borders and I got to transition down to the roadway. And then when I get to Olds, I transition back up onto the raised area that like, why can't we just be on the raised area the whole time? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start that and Stephen can always jump in if you want. Um, <clears throat> the the Olds to um, Borchers project is a little bit older than these other projects. And at the time, uh, with input from the city, the board determined that that type of bike treatment was what they wanted to see out there. Um, <clears throat> since that project moved on beyond that, there's been more input, more, more um, look at these different types of bike improvements, bike treatments. I also think to some extent, um, we've heard from the city that, you know, they, they seem to want to see, the, you know, a more protected bike facility. And so these other two projects, these were the type of facilities that, that our board selected. So there wasn't an opportunity to go back and change the design of that middle section? Yeah, you know, when, when, you, when we go to our board to talk about this, it's very early on. It's usually about 30% plans or earlier because you, you have to determine where you're gonna put that curb. And if you start to change now, you're moving the curb and the entire design, uh, you're, you're basically redesigning the majority sure. of the project, making that kind of change, yeah. I would love to see an overhead diagram of then what the transition looks like at Olds and then what the transition looks like at Board <coughs> where, where we can see clearly how that transition is gonna be made as you cross the intersection, that would be really helpful to me. Sure, and maybe maybe Matt has that. If he does, he can pop on and show that hopefully. And and because um, I, I know we have kind of looked at that and how that transitions. Yeah, and yeah, I'm sure there is one. I'm just I, I want to visualize it, so it's really helpful to see what yeah, that. Looks. I was just going to say, Councillor. I think uh, Russ, if we go to the last, or Dave, if you could move back to that last slide that showed the uh, bike facility. Keep going. I think it was our last uh, visual slide there. That one, yeah. So, so you can start to see it here. There's sort of a ramp up from street level into the into the raised uh, cycle track facility, and then you'd have a similar sort of ramp down as you go back to street level. Um, and if you were interested, um, if we don't have a graphic tonight, there's a some real world examples here in Hillsboro too, where that's sort of the technique that they've been using, where they have some raised cycle track facilities. So it, it's a pretty smooth transition from from a bike lane up to a raised 
uh, cycle track facility and then back down to the street again. Cool. Thanks, Stephen. Sorry, I've seen them around in person, typically typically around a corner area more so than in a street. But um, but I also know in our other cross sections, there's a planter strip in between the sidewalk and the bicycle lane, or a planter strip in between the bicycle lane and the roads. So that that adds, you know, obviously you've now you've got it not just a transition that looks like this. There's now a planter strip that's moving as well. So I, it's fine if there's no diagram. That's fine. I can I can imagine it enough. Yeah. And I was just going to add a little bit to what Russ was just saying. Um, we uh, I gave a presentation, gosh, it was just yesterday. It feels like a long time ago at the WCCC and uh, Mayor Mays was there. We were talking about the upcoming round of MSTIP projects. We'll start a process later this year to start thinking about allocating another round of projects uh, out into the future. And um, we were catching up about MSTIP 3E, which is our current project cycle that we're kind of in the middle of. This uh, project over at 99W was a MSTIP 3C and C. D. C and D. Yeah. So that's, it, it was a project that we committed funding uh, as far back as uh, 2012, maybe a little bit earlier. And for a variety of reasons, right away acquisitions, lots of complications with land use and variety of things uh, have, have held that project up. And the good news was that it did allow us the opportunity to partner with uh, the water supply team and, and try to do both of these projects at the same time. So that's, that's the upshot of uh, having been delayed a bit. Yeah. Other questions for, for the team? I, I have one quick one related to this and, and Mayor Mays travels this path. What's the status up north along Roy Rogers, close to Shoals Ferry? Obviously, the road, a lot of construction. The road looks like it's going to be nice and wide. When is that all scheduled to be done, finally? They were paving today. That's Again. a good time. Yeah, that, that's scheduled to, to wrap up this fall, Joe, if not sooner. So that'll be done before this all starts, fortunately for commuters. Maybe yeah. at the same time, but. It'll, it'll get them faster to Sherwood, but then hit the next construction zone. Okay. So we now have a water pipe coming from the south to whatever point on Roy Rogers near close to Beef Bend. Um, and then we're gonna have, we're building a water pipe up from the south towards the bridge are we going to sit through construction of them building a water, the, 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 the section in between where the road isn't going to get widened? Is, is the, where's the pipe going to lay between uh, Chicken Creek and Beef Bend? Yeah. Turn that one over to Mike or, or Dave probably just to kind of talk about the timing of that and where that might be. Yeah, so I, I think in terms of the uh, the location of the pipe, Mike's going to be a lot closer to those details than I am. But yeah, all of these projects are happening all around the same time. So that, that's that's what we call our PLM 4.3 project. Our, uh, our pipeline project goes from across Chicken Creek, across Tualatin, uh, the, the Tualatin River, up to uh, around Beef Bend, where we have our, where we terminated the, the pipeline section that was done with the county's road project. From on Roy Rogers Road up to up to Shoals, and um, and Mike, do you know? It seems like that one we're we're going to be advertising that one toward the end of this year as well. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I think that one goes out to bid uh, late fall, and uh, I'd say uh, as as we start out um, by Chicken Creek, we're we're doing trenchless construction, so we're out of the road. Uh, we we generally fall, you know, one side of the road or or the other. Uh, there's a few crossings that we need to do. We have a large, uh, over a 2,000 foot long tunnel underneath the uh, Tualatin River. Uh, but for the most part, all of our construction is off to the side of the road. And, you know, uh, Russ and the county are, you know, requiring us to keep traffic flow going. So I, I, I would suspect there's going to be really little impacts other than probably people slowing down to look, you know, as they drive bus construction. But we're really set up to minimize impacts to traffic. Okay, so yeah, that's my question was if 
any of those segments were going to be still underneath the road. Well, it's only a two lane road and there's no plans to make it a five lane road. So if it's off the side, then great. Tim, your hands up. My hand is up. Um, so um, I guess a question about the bridge there, obviously it's, it's two lanes and maybe this is for Steven. Uh, any, any thoughts on when that's going to be widened, you know, I, as South Cooper mountain continues to build out, you know, we're expecting a lot of those people to do their shopping and day-to-day -day stuff in Sherwood, because it's just closer and more convenient. I, I was, what are the plans there, timeframes, any thoughts? I know that's probably out in the future, but kind of curious. A, it might be a Mr. 3F project. That's right. Yeah, I, I think uh, that, that's a good question. And you're right, it is not programmed right now. We don't have funding allocated for that particular project to, to um, uh, improve Roy Rogers uh, to four lanes north of Shorewood at this point. So that is a, an unfunded need at this point. I think, um, you know, given the, the um, as you mentioned, the UGB expansions, we've actually just completed the Urban Reserves Transportation Study um, and uh, worked with the city staff on that project as well. And so trying to really assess with all of the multiple UGB expansions um, that were actually just upheld by the Court of Appeals. So good news there. Um, you know, there is just we're, we are anticipating there will be continued traffic growth in this corridor, along with many others uh, around the county. And then I think um, certainly with future sort of Sherwood West development, you know, there will be that increasing demand there. So we certainly know the need is there, but but don't have a specific time or, or um, uh, commitment in terms of the of the date yet. So yeah. okay. could you, uh, could you uh, share that traffic study with us? Yeah, absolutely. I'll uh, send a link to Joe or awesome. Julia. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't anticipate you had an exact date and a start date and all that. I was just. I was. I guess my question is more of you know where it is. Is it in the priorities in terms of this, how the county is looking at different different projects? Do we need to advocate for it? You know, I think that's where I was going with the question. Mm -hmm. We, uh, as a community, as a city council and community, we have to list our projects priority. We have projects with the county, uh, but we need to prioritize them um, and advocate for them in the next next mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm sure we'll all be in agreement on what those priorities are. Yeah, it's, you know, it's gotta be part of the, the county grid and <laughs> there's only a few options. <laughs> Pick your four and prioritize them because that's about what they are in town. Mm -hmm. um, anything else? We got a couple minutes left. Counselors, staff. Uh, David, Stephen, your teams, uh, thanks for getting us up to speed. Obviously, we put this out on YouTube for the community to be able to see. It's important for them to know what's coming. Um, you know, long story short, everybody, next three, three and a half years, you know, going to be a big project um, running through town and um, just. It will get done. It'll just take a lot longer than any of us could ever imagine it will. Hope you like orange. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right. Thank you, everyone. We will uh, we'll adjourn.